Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Mark Patterson, NCKFA. And a lot of people have been emailing me privately or Facebooking me privately about carp fishing. We have the dough ball open coming up and of course it's a fun event, but people like to catch fish when they come out and they have a bunch of carp questions. Again, it's not a fish that a lot of people fish for, especially kayak anglers. And I think I know why, so we're gonna do a carp 101. So here's some brief notes. You can email me privately or Facebook me privately or ask publicly and I'll do my best to answer. So here's some basics that will help you be better carp anglers. First of all, you've got to keep steel. You're steel fishing for carp. S-T-I-L-L. -L, steel. So you have to anchor the front and the back of the kayak. So I'm going to do my best to... There's your kayak. That's pretty good actually for me. So normally when you anchor up, you only anchor up one part of the kayak. Well, that's great uh, most of the time if you're in current and it holds you in position, but if you're in a lake and you get wind blowing, you know, this way or that way, it's going to swing your kayak all over the place. And the carp fish, uh, you're normally be using dough balls, and dough balls don't move around in their natural environment. And uh, that'll freak the fish out. You won't catch, I'm not saying you won't catch some, but you certainly won't catch as many. So when you're carp fishing, uh, I'm going to cover. Oh, I'm going to cover two different tactics. One is steel fishing, and one is stalking. But uh, this is for the steel fishing. You're going to want to use maybe a stick it pin or some device uh, to anchor the back of the kayak, and another one to anchor the front. Uh, actually, I put one on one side of the kayak, one on the other side of the kayak. That way, if I get a little wind, it kind of acts as a buffer and keeps me in like a little cradle. So. Uh, anchor the front and the back, you'll be much more successful with this. So that's number one, that's, your, that's a good tip. Number two, keep your rod tips as low or almost into the water as you can. Again, if this is your kayak and you're carp fishing, you don't want your rods way up here with your line going out. Two reasons. Number one, any movement that you do have is going to be um, uh, more uh, movement on your bait because the tip of the rod is going to move more greatly with a small uh, fulcrum effect down at the bottom. And number two, when that carp does pick up your dough ball, it can feel that tension, that flex in the rod, and they'll eject it pretty quick. Carp are really tricky fish to catch. They have super sensitive mouths. So you want to keep your rod tip. Here, we're going to erase really quick. Once you anchor your kayak, let's try this again. Once you anchor your kayak in the front, I mean the back and the front, you want to keep your rod tips low. Um, I did a poor job of that. What I mean is you want to keep them parallel or straight to the water. If you can tip them down a little bit and you want to keep them directly facing your bait. You don't want your rod tip to have to flex left or right. Again, flexing is bad. When that cart moves off with your bait, you want it to just come off the reel, not have to flex the rod. That'll provide you with a lot more hookups too. So, number one, keep still. Number two, keep your rod tips low. Very light drag. Tip number three. Light. Light drag. And I mean super light. Uh, I use, uh, what I like to use, the reels I like to use, they have this bait clicker feature uh, so that when the line comes off, it comes off really light. And I can make it even lighter by adjusting the back and really make it light. And then when I want to, I turn it in gear, it engages the spool and I can set the hook or if I'm using a circle hook. Super light drag. The way I normally set the hook is, once that carp is running, I'll just cup the spool. Let the line come tight as I'm getting it out of the rod holder. Once I think, ooh, that's a lot of pressure, I'll let, gently let my hand off the spool or just use my finger until I can tighten the drag down a lot. Uh, not a lot, but more than the super light drag. So just super light drag so that carp swims off. And normally he'll set the hook himself, but a light drag. So let's review. Number one, keep steel. Number two, rods low. Number three, light drag. What about your hook size? I use number fours. Uh, you probably can't see this. Uh, I'll hold it up. Probably can't see it. Uh, but this is a number four. I use a circle hook, uh, a light wire circle hook, or if I'm using a suspending type rig, 
I'll use a uh, number four treble hook, same hooks I use for King Mackerel. And I'll show you why I do that in a minute. But smaller hooks are better. Even a really huge carp is going to have a very small mouth. So small hooks are good. All right, so keep still, rod tips down, light drive, number four hook, small hook. Another tip is going to be how to position your bait. A lot of time in the summer, the, the carp are going to be suspended in the water column. They're not going to be, here's your water, that's the bottom. The carp will be, he's happy carp. The carp will be kind of maybe two to four feet down and not feeding. They won't have their head down feeding. They'll just be kind of lazily floating about. These fish are tough to catch, but you can catch them. The way you catch them, and we have a video on the NCKFA site, website, our YouTube channel, and there are other videos out there too that talk about a slip float. Slip float is deadly in this method uh, when the fish are in this position because I can adjust my float so that my bait, when I cast it out, my bobber's on the top and my bait hangs right in the face of this fish. So even if they're not actively feeding, if they swim by and see a juicy little dough ball right there, they're more often than not just going to suck it in. You'll see that cork slowly go under. Again, if you're using um, a treble hook, you want to set the hook. If you're using a circle hook, just cover the spool and it'll hook, he'll hook himself. So suspend fishing is a good way. If you see the fish, if you see the fish with uh, like a red fish, That's more like a rabbit, actually, doesn't it? So anyway, if the fish are down and they're actively feeding, they're a lot easier to catch. Still tricky. You want to approach them, try to, try to keep your shadow off of them. Stand up, use your paddle, pole, paddle to slowly get close to them. And then you can either drop your bait straight down on them or flick it a little bit in front of them. If you see that they're, they're basically cows mowing the underwater vegetation. So if you see them moving in one direction, if you're a school, Put it out about five or six front of them, feet in front of them. Let them come to you. You'll feel the tension and you can set the hook. Oh, one other tip. If you're using the bobber method, you want to use the same bobber you use for crappie. The lightest bobber. If they feel any tension when they move off of that dough ball, they'll eject it. So again, the lightest bobber that you can, lightest slip float that you can. So, um, so let's do a quick review again. We're going to keep still, rod tips at an angle, very light drag number four hook, slip floats if they're suspended, fishing on the bottom if they're not. Now we'll do another little quick thing on bait. A lot of people are like, do you use this mixture? Do you use that mixture? I'm old school trailer park. My grandmother and I, we went old school simple. We went bunny bread uh, and corn. Try to get the, well don't try to, get the whole kernel corn. Don't use it straight out of the can. It's too uh, juicy. It's too soupy. What we'll do the night before is we'll pour the juice off, pour it out, uh, put a bunch of paper towels, put the corn out, kind of pat it dry, and then put it in a little Tupperware that we don't have the sharp lid in the kayak with you too. Can't tell you how many times as a kid I got cut on that lid. So uh, pat it dry. Get your corn kind of dry. And the reason being is when you use your bread, I'll, um, I'll take a loaf of bread, bunny bread, or any type of cheat, cheap white bread. Um, take the crust off. Nobody likes crust, not even carp. So we'll take the crust off, and then we'll take the corn. Well, I'll use uh, my real job's a painting contractor, so I have a paint bucket, a uh, plastic paint pail. Put some corn in there, put a couple of pieces of the bread in there, and then just use my hand to knead it up and just the uh, condensation from inside of the bag. It'll pick up a little of the juice from your dried corn or just a little of the sweat from your hand. It'll give you a dough ball and you can roll it around about the size of a Super Bowl. That's the size you want. What I'll do is uh, you've got it mixed in with the corn. You've got your dough ball. What I'll do is I'll take, uh, if I'm using a treble hook, I'll take four, piece, uh, three pieces of the corn, good whole kernel corn, cover each bit of the treble hook, then just put my dough ball, surround it with that, so that it hangs just like that. And that's how we're fishing it. 
I mean, it's simple. It's really simple. Um, so again, cast that out there. If you see them suspended, if you see them feeding down, you can take this, and this is the other method. Pretend I don't have a slip float on this. It's called stalking. Uh, they really uh, do a great job of this in England. If you want to do stalking carp, you can see that. They make some really good videos. They appreciate the carp in England. So, um, and what we're doing is basically slowly using a stand-up paddle or your traditional paddle, paddling along and looking for those, those big tails along the banks or on lily pads. If that carp's down, you can approach them quietly and literally just drop this down beside them leave your line slack so you know it's on the bottom and when you see it go tight and start to move off you set the hook and it's on because that's a big fish in close quarters so uh, that's how we're doing it look forward to seeing you guys at the dough ball open